Good evening. It is 6.01 p.m. on Tuesday, July 30th, and I am calling the Waitley Select Board meeting to order. I'm typically the chair of this meeting, but since I'm away on vacation and we're unclear how consistent our uh, Wi-Fi is going to be, I'm going to request that Joyce Palmer Fortune chair this meeting tonight. Any objections? No objections. Okay, no objections. Then we'll carry yeah. on. Um, uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes and have yes. any comments? Yes, I have some comments. How about you, Julie? Do you have yes. any comments? No comments. Okay. I yes. move we approve the minutes from the July 16th meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Julie? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Aye. Great. Um, the well, vendor. And payroll warrants were included. Are there any comments on no that? No comments. No comment. Okay, then we can move on to public comment. Um, this is. You want to sign those later? Or... Oh, okay, I can sign those. Um, um, the public comment time for town residents uh, who are welcome to provide comments on items not listed in the agenda. And I think, Amy, you're here for something on the agenda. Uh, Nat, do you have any comments? Doing a fine job. Oh, that's the kind of comments we'd like to hear from the public. I don't see anybody else on Zoom, so I'm going to move on to new business then. Um, the uh, very first item 4A, I think that might be what Amy is here for, to discuss and vote on a request to reduce voting hours for the September primary. So, Amy, would you? I read your letter, but maybe you'd like to summarize that. So the uh, state allows us. Uh, town with under a population of 4,999 to have a reduction in early voting hours to 25% of their open business hours. So I am, I met with the Board of Registrars. They agreed to the 25%. The list that I have together is uh, more than 25%, but it's not my entire office working hours. So that's why I'm requesting a reduction. Yeah. The uh, state requires this like for two through. Thanks, Steve. Um, I had one question, but maybe I'll ask Steve, Julie, or Fred have questions first. Uh, I've got some questions. Can you tell us specifically what would be the hours if they were not reduced, and then what would be the reduced hours? So if the hours were not reduced, it would be Monday eight to six, Tuesday through Thursday. Eight to two, and then I would be here Friday and Saturday. Okay, so this is a, as you said, a reduction in the early voting hours. Correct. Okay, and then with the reduction, it would be. It would be Saturday twelve to five, Monday ten to twelve, Tuesday ten to twelve, Wednesday ten to twelve, Thursday ten to twelve, and then the following Friday twelve to five. I don't see Saturday. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't see Saturday. You don't see Saturday. I'm, 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 on the letter, you say well, it no. says our. I'm reading this letter. Friday, right. in fact, we're we're working off of this letter. Oh wait, this is Friday the twenty fourth. Let me look. The twenty fourth is a Saturday. This Saturday. So I apologize. Oh, okay. So there's just a typo Saturday. in the letter. Correct. Oh, okay. So the Friday and Saturday seems like it's mandatory in some way. <laughs> so you are required to have at least four hours on the weekend open for during their early voting period. Oh, okay. So that first one actually, because that was my only concern was, um, I was thinking everything was weekdays, but no, there's a Saturday. No, there's a Friday and a Saturday okay. that yeah. I will be coming in. And, uh, and so that that satisfies what I was. Yeah, but um, it, I still think the letters got a problem. Saturday's the 24th? Saturday should be the 24th, yes. Yeah. And this is Monday or Thursday, the 24th. 5th to 29th and that. Okay, I apologize. Sunday. Wait, 25th uh, so would be a Sunday. That should be 26th. Yep. Right. Uh, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Yeah. yeah, so there's, and then the 30th is? It's the Friday. It's the Friday. It's the Friday. Friday. Okay, so just the two typos. Uh, the first Friday that's written there, hours would be, mm -hmm. that should be Saturday. Um, and then the numerical date for Monday through Thursday is 26 through 29, mm -hmm. not 25 through yep. 29. Yeah, and then the 30th. Uh, and then the 30th is is correct, though. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
if I reduced it to just 25%, it, I would only be open for seven hours. Yeah. I feel like that doesn't give residents. Right. So this is yeah. somewhere between 25 and 100%. Yes. Uh, yep. Something roughly 50%? It's roughly like 40 something. 40 something percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when people come in have you for early voting, do you think these line up with like when people do come in or do people like never come in for early voting? Um, I don't know how the primary is going to go. I know that during the local election, we had quite a few people come in the day before. It was my busiest day, mm -hmm. the day before the actual election, which was like a bonus open early voting day. I'm oh. not doing a bonus early voting day because it's Labor Day. Oh, yeah. So I'm hoping that we, people will utilize the Friday and Saturday a lot. Yeah. I'll get like maybe one or two a day during the week. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I, I my set questions are satisfied. Um, I'm fine. I think I'm my question. I will move that we approve the early voting hours as submitted by the town clerk. Or as amended? As amended. <laughs> Second. Okay. All right. Then let's go to a vote. Julie? Aye. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. May I add something that's kind of related? I lost one of my border registrar members, so if anybody knows anybody. Okay. Oh, okay. Is there any requirements? Uh, they do have to be a registered voter. Uh -huh. I already have a Democrat and Republican and independent on the board, so I so party won't matter. Oh, okay. Because everybody's on registered the voter of any party or no party affiliation. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. So people, thank you. Get out there. It's yeah. so much fun doing elections. <laughs> Hot luck. I gotta say, it's it's a fun time. Okay. Um, I buried the agenda here. I need to unbury it. Okay. Uh, next item: recommendation for an energy storage system study committee. Um, and maybe uh, Pete can say more about that. So um, yes, thank you. I put together a recommendation for the select board to consider creating an energy storage system study committee. The reason for this is due to um, the desire and the pressure to create and develop solar, a lot of solar development, PV fields, but with that battery storage. Um, and currently under the attorney general's interpretation of um, the exemption allowances for solar, there is a belief that battery storage also falls under that same exemption. But there is there are some um, community concerns with regards to safety, um, environmental impacts of battery, not so much on the solar, but on the battery itself. Um, and so this is this study committee is contemplated in order to look at what mechanisms can be done at a local level to help with uh, the siting requirements and establishing standards for siting of battery storage. And this is for large scale storage, not a uh, single battery not storage somebody, that you may be doing on a residential property, right. because that should be as of right and just yeah. move along. This is for large scale. Um, and so the idea here is to include memberships from the Select Board, Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Board of Health, Agricultural Commission, Energy Committee and a member of the public not currently serving on one of those uh, boards. So you get a mix of different uh, expertise on that study mm -hmm. committee. It has an explicit um, designation where it's just looking at this, but it's not restricted in, you know, we only want to see a general bylaw or a zoning bylaw. Looking at what are some of those tools that could be used, or is it simply establishing a local licensing? mechanism that would then uh, give the local, whether it be the select board or some other entity, the ability to make determinations on proper siting because zoning clearly other communities have been attempting zoning amendments and they've been overturned and they, they have not been approved. The AG has said it's in conflict with mass general law, therefore likely any zoning amendment will not Hold up muster currently under the interpretation. So this is to look at what are those methods. Okay. So are we looking for a report or specific recommendation? Specific recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That sounds like it would be a good idea to have that. Um, would we? Um, I remember the last time people were talking about battery storage um, and they were talking about safety in terms of fire. Mm -hmm. And I don't see um, anything here specifically on like the fire chief, but I would say, I don't know that we want to put this on the fire chief's plate, but I would think whatever this committee does that we keep our public safety yes. people in the loop. But I don't want to burden them with something else on their job. Yes. Um, but uh, but they should be kind of consulted on. Which that is a good point because yeah. one of the things similar to licensing, anytime you do like underground storage things, that is yeah. a fire department licensing and permitting process. Yeah. So it is similar uh, for that same exact reason for safety of uh, potential flammability. Um, so yeah. 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 <clears throat> And, uh, and the the one thing that is a little different about it is that you you know put out an electrical fire with water <laughs> so uh, so <laughs> it definitely and I'm sure our fire chief is knows about that sort of thing or knows exactly where to go to get the information you yes. need about that so um, that's uh, well if we decide to make this committee we probably got to come up with some designees here uh, one from among us if. If the board does want to do this, I'm happy to reach out to each one of these boards and ask them to discuss the the purpose and see if they have a designee that they want to put forward um, that can then be brought to the board as a final appointment. And then we can also advertise for that residency. Yeah. Mm, okay. Whatever. But I'm yeah. happy. So tonight we just think about making it. We don't have to decide who's on it at this point. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Do uh, you have anything you want to add, Julie? No, it sounds like a great idea. Fred? Yeah, no, it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Uh, I've moved for approval of setting up uh, a energy storage systems study committee. I'll second that. Um, all right, we're going to go to a vote. Uh, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Uh, next, last item under new business is the discussion of fireworks, awareness, messaging, and procedure. And I have to say, I did not get a chance to read the whole thing um, beforehand. Um, so this is an intermunicipal agreement. Oh, no, that's the shared conservation. Right. Oh, there's nothing in the packet okay. to read there's about nothing this. In the okay. Package. All right. Sorry. Also, I can speak to this. This was based yes. on... Um... A uh, public comment at our last select board meeting where a citizen came in and, you know, had had commentary about a uh, public display of fireworks that wasn't number one necessarily legal and number two um, was disturbing her livestock and likely livestock of other folks in this agricultural community and somebody perhaps the citizen had suggested having um, like a robo call prior to July 4th or other fireworks friendly um, celebrations, just reminding folks that, you know, there are laws about fireworks and to be aware that we live in an agricultural community and people have livestock that are frightened by fireworks. It just seemed like it would be a really um, town friendly thing to do, to send out a robo call like that, just letting folks know. Okay. Do we have any indication of what any other municipalities may be doing on this front, if anything? Any other what? Sorry? Any other towns? So no. Just... No, we don't. So we'd have to look into that and find out if anyone else is doing that. And then uh, as you the agenda... Want... Yeah, you kind of want to craft a message yeah. that doesn't say, hey, we know y'all are doing these illegal <laughs> things. Here's like the real rules for not getting caught, which is to, I, I don't know. I mean, we don't want to, right. we don't want to make it seem like, like, wink, wink, no, no, you don't have to obey the long wait because we know you're going to do fireworks anyway. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I think it, I would not be the one to craft that message because. <laughs> well, like, and then the message could be a reminder of the restriction yeah. and then the reasons why. And yeah. then you go, rather than yeah. say, we know you're going to do it, right. but we ask that you don't because of this. That, 
like substantiate why that rule exists. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Other yeah. Reasons. But the main reason that we're trying to go at is the the impact on. Yeah, we, we also, also don't want to send a message that you have one firefighter we're going to come down on you like you've done a great. I'd I'd be happy to work on uh, crafting that message and uh, you know at least initially looking into what other towns are doing if they're doing anything and then figuring out and bringing something back to the board for yeah. Sure. Yeah, I suspect whatever message we give, again, that should also be maybe our public safety people are, have some ideas. Yeah. Um, Great ideas. That. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, cool. cool. All right. So it sounds like Julie's got a little thing on her plate then. And yes, I do. Seat. And uh, I think that's it for new business. Um, moving to old business. Um, oh, we have the agreement for the shared conservation agent. Uh, and that's the thing, actually, that I didn't get a chance to look through with a fine tooth comb. Um, but uh, Fred and Julie, do you have any um, comments or uh, questions about this? No, I do not. No, I don't. Um, I feel like the main thing that would have been changed is the percentage, because I think we had Goshen pulled out, right? So the percentage is among five times instead of six. That's correct. Right? Yeah, um, the, that is the main yeah. parts of the Yeah, position. and then like taking Goshen's name off the front. Yes. Um, I didn't check to make sure it was taken out. And I suppose that's... I'd say, just for the record, I should say the other towns are Ashfield, Buckland, Pauley, and Williamsburg. And the other four towns have... Uh, approve this updated agreement so we're the last yeah. one not that not that pressure just so that you're aware oh, that yeah. there is oh i'm feeling that pressure yeah. <laughs> that's um, why i wanted you chairing <laughs> the pressure yeah, yeah. The pressure um well that and i turned off the ac so you turn off the ac oh thank you, <laughs> thank you. um yeah then the the money for this has been Allocated by town meeting. Well, this is that actually is, funded for through a grant. The first, oh, this, this, the first year yeah. funded through a grant. Right. Yeah. 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 So, which then will help us determine actual costs because a lot of the what's great about the merger grant funding is it will also provide for all of the setup costs to get the conservation agent set up with the computer and whatnot, things that we then don't have to worry about outlaying. In the next yeah. operating, it's really about sustaining that employee. Right. Now, eventually, you may have to replace that computer, but we don't eventually. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, I would consider a motion. I move that we uh, agree <laughs> the, the, the that we approve the revised agreement that we have received. <laughs> Second. Okay. All those in favor, Julie. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. Great. We're zooming right along. Woohoo. Next item is the Quonquant sign. Um, review, discuss, and vote of the wayfinding sign requests. Um, and I don't know which. There's no material. There's no material. It's just a yeah. report, which yeah. I am happy to repeat. Uh, repeat. Report, please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I must need more coffee. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just as a reminder, Quancon Farms had submitted a request to MassDOT in order to have an agricultural directional signs installed on Route uh, US 5, Route 10, um, at the intersection of Swamp Road and Christian Lane. And with that, MassDOT's new standards are they can certainly do agricultural directional signs. However, when you are exiting from that primary state road, they then want a local road signage called a trailblazer. The question had been, and, and the, the installation of the trailblazer sign is on the municipality. Yeah. Uh, the question was, how large of a trailblazer sign did we have to do when we weren't getting that information? We finally have those details. And so the recommendation is for the board to approve the installation of trailblazer signs um, with the stipulation very similar to mass DOT stipulation for the agricultural directional signs. And that is that the applicant, Quancon Farms, will be responsible for 
uh, reaching out to the fabricator, which is the same fabricator from MassDOT, with the specifications that are outlined here that the Quan Quan, the applicant, will pay for the fabrication of the sign and the delivery of those signs and the post to the highway department. The highway department will then install the signs at the appropriate location. So uh, the only requirement really is for the board to approve the signs because you, as the board, have authority on signage within the right of way. Um, and then our highway department to do the actual labor to install, but otherwise it's on right. the, the private entity to pay for the signs that are benefiting them. So the, the sign sign or the, the requirements are <clears throat> two 12 foot square um, galvanized poles to put the signs on. 12 foot square? 12 foot by two inch square, just a square, oh, okay, sorry. Okay. I missed that two inch part. <laughs> 12 foot by two inch square uh, galvanized poles. Um, and then two signs, either 12 by 18 or 18 by 24, depending on the size that they need to fit the font font arms lettering on the it's side. Inches, okay. not feet. So something that those are inches, yeah. 12 by 18. Or, sorry. Just <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, We're going highways. Yeah. That size, that uh, would be 12 by 18. Yeah. And the 18 by 24 would be. Yeah. That size. Yeah. Okay. I think they need divisions themselves. So. Um that's that these would be a point oh eight um aluminum. The background shall be blue, um, with their logo, lettering, and directional area arrow, as well as border in white. This is following um you at the what is it, National Highway Transportation Safety Board regulations for signage. So because it's a directional sign, it needs to be blue. Um, yeah. And um, following also mass DOT standards for re reflectivity. Mm -hmm. um, and like the size of letters and stuff is awesome. It's so all we, we right. only approve, we and we can't like approve a smaller font, right? And no, just, correct, order, because they, it's, approve... it's dependent on the standards of uh, yeah. the Uniform Traffic Code. That's it, Uniform yeah. Traffic Code. Okay. Um, and that is all based on visibility and the fact that it's a local road, which is why the sign can be smaller as opposed to a highway yeah. where the sign has to be bigger. larger because of the speed, the rate of speed. Um, okay. So th those are the standards. And if the board does agree, then I can certainly provide that letter of approval to the applicant, let them know these requirements. Do we have locations? Yes. Um, I don't have them explicitly on the map but they are one would be installed on swamp road and one would be on christian lane um uh, as you are heading from route 10 route 5 on those roads to to the property so, as opposed to so the on the christian lane as opposed like so you you have to have turned on the christian lane for example yeah to see it. once you turn on the christian lane and then and it's going to like indicate quant quant farm and this like right turn up ahead or something like that. yes okay yep. and thanks there's swamp road on Swamp Road or at the end of Swamp Road, indicating it would be prior to the the turn. The intersection. Yeah, the so intersection. Would, yep. that makes sense. Okay. And the, the, uh, and how will they know to turn on that road from five and ten? Is there another sign that's on five and ten? Well, the signs on five and ten are the ones that Mass okay. DOT are going to install that will say to turn here oh, okay. or to turn so, here in five hundred feet or whatever it is. Okay, and those are not up yet. No, so that's the thing. And Mass DOT requires that we install the trailblazers first before they will install the agriculture system. Understood. All right. Any other uh, questions? No. no. Okay. We have a motion. Um, will we approve the signs for quantify as discussed? Second. Okay, great. Then let's vote. Julie. Yes. Fred. Yes. Yes. All right, very good. Um, then uh, we've got two more items. Item C under new business discuss uh, and potentially vote on a few new funding requests of unobligated ARPA funds. So <laughs> that is, I think, what most of the rest of the stack is. Yes. Uh, I was I had a conversation today with the Fire chief in support of funding, but I don't know that he's ready. He submitted one um, estimate, 
I don't know that he's quite ready yet to make that his only recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of wanted you to be aware of the request, but also understanding that there is one item that he gave a very rough estimate, but doesn't yeah. have an actual formal estimate. Do we have any other? Uh, this is the meeting room at the fire station. Right. Yeah. Um, which, and so this is not going to be pooled 24 hours a day. It's when they have meetings. Right. So, a reasonable assumption. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the, the meeting room and radio room would not. It's not a full time. Yeah. So, how long is it? How often is or like what fraction of the time is that room occupied? I wonder. I don't know if anybody here happens to know. I don't know. Um, from the number of times I've gone past the fire station, and there's been more than one car there, not much, I would have to say. But, right. But I know that, they have yeah. meetings once a month. Um, yeah, because that can be it can be a real drag on an energy bill if it's left there on oh, all yeah. of that, especially yeah. if, it's an, if it's an old building. But I mean, a mini split is easy enough and fast enough to turn off and on. But um, in general, going past there, there usually isn't anyone there. Right. So I guess uh, yeah, I would want to. So yeah, but, but I, I I would hold off on yeah. Any other, do we are there any other suggestions or proposals that we have for it's using this fund? It's just those three. So the town clerk's request for the electronic voting machines, mm -hmm. the mini split at the fire department, and then the window replacements at the fire department. Can I say something about my request? Oh sure. I just sure. found out this morning. That potentially I can get reimbursed for one of them. Oh. If I use it for early voting, because early voting costs get reimbursed by the state. And another clerk got her tabulator, one of the tabulators reimbursed. Okay. So it's all reimbursement, the but state. it could mean that if you we were to uh, allocate it, we paid for it, and then we got the reimbursement, it goes back into unobligated, hopefully before yes. December. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the otherwise it goes into. She the got hers in the spring, and she got her reimbursement back. I've gotten my reimbursements back for um the March and June elections already. So, so how many months did it take to get the reimbursement? It's like two months. Okay. It's just we we've got a back end. Limit on this. <laughs> yeah. That, that we can't get a reimbursement on this after December 31st. Right. I mean, you could. I mean, it's just going to, if you just want to be able to use it for an ARPA. Okay. Right. We'll go back to the general. Yeah. Go back to, okay. uh, rather, we wouldn't lose the reimbursement. Right. Right. So, you know, well, I, I feel like I don't quite have enough information tonight about what other kinds of things. We're looking at a total of um, remaining ARPA funds of roughly how much? 27,000. Uh, 27,000. And um, there's a lot on this so list that- I'm looking, yeah, almost, I'm looking. It's almost 30,000. It's close to 30,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a bunch of these are closed and a bunch of these are ongoing. There are still, yeah. The ongoing ones may or may not have. True. Sure. Yeah. And is there any, um, like any indication on these? I'd be happy to reach out to the different project managers on those to find yeah. out their status, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I know this has to be done Quickly because we do have a, a back end time yeah. limit. Right. On the other hand, like we like to have as close to a final number as we can. Right. And it's I mean it's August, August, right? Yeah. And so we um, yeah, we do have a little bit more time. And um so I guess I know it, I won't be popular for saying it, but I don't know if our community is ready to give up a paper ballot. Um, that's, I, I feel like 
this should go on a town meeting appropriation. I tried. <laughs> uh, well, that would give an indication of where the, the town is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, so, wait, were you denied including it on the warrant or when on the warrant it was denied? No, I did not. Yeah. Yes. So it didn't even get to go to the body. Yeah. Um, I, I think probably, I mean, maybe we should put it on a town meeting warrant. Um, I think the cost is not that extravagant, but it's, and especially if you can get at some point some of it reimbursed. But I just, I know how people feel oh. about the paper ballot. And I know it's, uh, it's more work for you, and I think I, that's the thing. I that's why I think I'm not going to be very popular for saying it, but um, it's what I think at the at the moment. That uh, I don't know that it will cost more to do paper ballot than the um, tabulators because what you save in time, you have to pay for programming. You have to have an election. You have to get it programmed again. Um, uh, and it would be great if it were a system where we can program it ourselves. Um, but then what do you do when the programmer screws up? Because I know computer programs, we all know from this past week, computer programs never mess up <laughs> very much. Um, so I think that's one reason why people do feel the way they do about their paper ballots. Um, so I guess I'm not ready to put ARPA funds on on these. I'm still, I, I'd like to think I'm still open to discussion and talking with people about it, but. Um, I, I need to think, is there any way, I know that we do put out community surveys. I know we've done it in the past. I know that the library's done it. Yeah. Is, there, is that something that potentially we could discuss and maybe just do? We could put a survey, but I would like to, inform people of exactly what it is and what we're looking for and why yeah. as opposed to just putting right. a survey out and being like hey because i don't think people realize the yeah. work that goes into it well maybe yeah. a survey is a good start up for a or a scoop part you know, or something the survey attached yeah i don't know just mm -hmm. maybe i more than have it i know we did it for the zip code and that's kind of what i know we did it through survey monkey i believe and yeah we got a lot of data through that i just I don't know, something to talk about if we... I, I, a lot will depend on how you word yes. that yeah. survey. Yeah. Surveys, if, if you, if you can't word it to yeah. you know, want Waitley to have electronic voting, yeah. might be yes. If you say, do you want Waitley to get rid of the yeah. ballot box, the answer will probably be no. Right. right. Yeah, I think that goes for everything. But, it's definitely the way you approach but it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. but if you if you trick people, <laughs> yeah. then yeah. we'll pay for it later. I but, don't no, I yeah. Oh, no, you guys, I, I, I'm saying, do a survey. It's, it's, it's not a very decision. Yeah. I don't want people, I don't, I don't want to like, yeah. pull over yeah. anybody's eyes. Yeah. But I don't think your arguments are bad at all. I think your arguments are actually very good. I just feel like people aren't ready for it. Um, the, but the way we get people on board is by trying to convince them and, you know, give them um, if you know if you if you wrote something up and put it in the scoop in September, then um, they can also put in there. Hey, we want your feedback. Um, and either, uh, well, people who get the PDF version will be able to click on it. The paper version, yeah. you have to make a tiny U URL or something if you wanted to collect um, information that way. Or you can welcome people to send in their thoughts by whatever means is convenient to them. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that's and, a great, uh, great start. To just that would, I, I would completely support that because okay. I, I really am sympathetic to yeah. the, uh, you know, using your time wisely, right? Well, not that's just me, me but and everybody. I hurt my election workers and yeah. everybody else. And everybody else, yeah. Using people's time. And the time. integrity of the election itself. Like, I'm, I'm so, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but like it has to be like to the T. Right. So afraid yeah, you have to be really, mistakes. really careful. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So then, I, I mean, all of that should go 
should go into your, you know, the pros and the cons, right? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. But given that, we also will need to find a, potentially an alternative to spending the ARPA money. Oh yeah, I, but you, well, if you if you get the word out, then there's a if there's say a special town meeting, we yeah. can appropriate that out of regular funds. I, I, right. it, we just need to make the case and okay. let people come and vote on it. Okay. You know, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy. I'm more than happy to do that. I mean, we I mean, we can't appropriate. I mean, should, let me restate that. We can appropriate them so long as it gets approved at a town meeting. Yeah. Uh, a special or a or a yeah. general. Yeah. yeah. But in that case, we would still need yeah. to, to, your, to, yeah, to yeah. find yeah. a project in ARPA yeah. appropriate for the for the ARPA, the ARPA money yeah. that we would not be spending on this. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. far it looks like we have one from the fire chief. And uh, other than Amy's, there aren't others, but you're saying there may be one on the way from the, another one from the fire chief? Well, the fire chief has two. We only have one formal quote. So right, right. Yeah, we don't okay. have the other quote. Oh, okay. So yeah. we're unlikely to be able to make decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't tonight think we're in a position to take. Right. So, uh, but I would like for the next time if he can give us some idea of what. Um, what fraction of time is that going to be used? Yes. I don't know if they have, like, is that also going to be used for their heat in the winter? Um, I don't know if they've got a different heating system. Is this really just being used for an air conditioner mm -hmm. or is it a backup? I, I just said, I, 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 I talked to uh, talk him today. Oh, it's primarily going to be used for air conditioning. And mm -hmm. one of the alternatives actually is to put a wall unit air conditioner in. So it's not going to yeah. be used to heat the building. Oh, okay. That the building has a heating system. Yeah, it must, it's all, all, already. It's just inadequate, either no or inadequate air conditioning for meetings. For the meetings in the summer. Go to that point. Should the heating system break, the heating system could be the backup heating system. At least a partially. It's partially. not, not going to heat the just whole Just for that space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just for that particular It's not going to heat the whole big yeah. right. vehicle storage area. Yeah. Okay. All right. But I, if we can, I would still put out a note to department heads and say, you know, are there, are there any projects you would want to propose in in the you know yeah. fifteen thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar range okay. that we might consider for this. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've got, we've like got to spend that money. If, we can't just... if, there's, if there's four or five thousand other projects, right? Then. Right. Well, whatever. Yeah. yeah I'll say fifteen I'll... to twenty thousand dollars worth yeah. of projects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anyone have anything else to add to the ARPA discussion? No. Okay. All right. Last item under old business: the Donahue dog. We need an update. Um, and I don't have that information. That would be Pete, Pete probably. Oh, yeah. So um, the appeal hearing was held today. Um, the town was represented with town council. We had our police chief, the shelter officer, um, some residents, myself, and uh, Fred Barron. Uh, the hearing was held. Testimony was given. The um, at the end, the magistrate did conclude with saying that they will, he's going to take the information under advisement, which is indication that he is now going into review. We don't have an indication as to when a decision will be rendered. Uh, uh, our town council is our representative and will receive the decision as soon as it is it is rendered. So we will be notified right away um, through KP. But um, it could be tomorrow, but it could be three months. We unfortunately don't have, don't have any it. clear indication as to how we don't even have one clear indication. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, we will, however, likely need to hold an executive session um, in order to discuss that case and um, next steps. But because it is any litigation, it will require going into um, or litigation currently and in mm, that would be consideration that we need to go into executive session. So uh, just so you're aware, we will likely have to include that for an opportunity. Okay. And we're not sure when that is, but 
Um, I, I'll or work well, virtually. It, it might even be before when we have the uh, decision from. Oh, it would almost certainly happen before the decision, okay. just as preparation. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Do you have any questions, Julie? No. I spoke to Peter yeah. earlier today. I was there. Yeah, you were there. Okay. Frank did a great job. He testified. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, just in, without going into any detail, the much of the today's hearings dealt with procedure on our meeting, dealing with our meeting of this year of mm -hmm. June 29th. Oh, okay. June 10th to 24. I mean, okay, June, June 10th to 24. It is not revisiting the decision of June 29th of last year. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, now it looks like it's time for select board liaison updates. Uh, why don't we start with Julie? Do you have anything on your various liaising? I do not have anything at present. Okay, Fred? Uh, all I have is we will have a new senior operator <clears throat> at the highway department. Yay! Um, that that'll be up for appointment at your next meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, because we had a retirement. Of, um. Yeah. Of, of yes. Dougie, and we were appointing a new senior operator, and I talked to Keith, and he and I will have to get together. To formulate a plan to get back to the consultant on um, the highway department building. Uh, that sort okay. of been put on the back burner temporarily with the administrator not being. Uh, yep. Until Pete came on board, and we will drag Pete into that discussion. <laughs> uh, but that, that's why I got put on hold. Okay. Jersey, right. you don't mind if I can follow on Fred's sure. point. So, uh, there is a recommendation that's going to be coming before the board at the August 13th meeting in order to promote one of the operator laborers to the senior oh, okay. um, operator position. It means that we will have a vacancy. We are understaffed right now in the highway department. Keith would really like to be able to post that operator laborer position now so that we can start to receive. I'm happy to do it, but I know the normal procedure is for the board to oh. say you have authority. I know it wasn't an item, but I, I don't know how you no, handle it explicitly or if we're in an area because we're doing the internal that we can go ahead and post for it, just kind of asking a question. Otherwise, I'm happy I, to keep it on the August 13th for a formal discussion after your promotion. Um, do you know what Eric's current status is as far as availability? Is he off of leave? Not yet. No. That's why we have the the current amount from with yeah. staffing and right. So that's yes. oh, essentially we'd be down two people. Yes. Yes. I does not help us to delay two weeks. You obviously will not yeah. be asked to appoint an operator laborer until we've done yeah. the promotion, but at least getting names of applicants. That I, that seems right. to me like that. That seems that, reasonable that's a to, wise to post. Yeah, we're yeah, not changing yeah. anything outside of the right. job description or pay or anything. Yeah. It would stay exactly the same. So yeah. if that's okay, I, I would post for it tomorrow. Okay. So Do we need a vote? It would, yeah. It okay. Would. Uh, that make a motion. Then. I move mean, that we authorize the town administrator to post an opening for an operator in the highway department. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Julie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, I've got, uh, I guess, only two things that are updates. Um, today, we went through the three, three locations that are potentially locations for a South County Senior Center, a more permanent one, um, with two members of the, um, the firm e EMV. Yeah, EDM. yeah, EDM. Okay, uh, from EDM, they were very wonderful. They asked very good questions. We uh, toured three places. We started at the uh, Congregational Church at South Deerfield. Saw that for about half an hour. Walked around, asked lots of questions. Um, came to Four Sandy Lane to look at sort of the empty shell of the warehouse there, 
uh, as a potential place to renovate. Um, and then we went to the Oxford building in Sunderland that we have visited in the past, but we went down with these folks. Um, then after that, we had like about two hours, two, a little more than two hours um, in a meeting with Zoom and, uh, sorry, with Zoom, on Zoom with uh, a third member of the firm uh, who asked a lot. That discussion was really good about what kind of uses we have currently, what kind of services do we want, what do you think we need to do to do better, what other kinds of things are we looking to grow into. Um, so that was a really, really nice discussion. So I'm so glad that this feasibility study is actually getting uh, underway. What it, I feel like what we'll have at the end of it is um, a lot more information. And uh, I feel like we've given them sort of the, I don't know, the golden triangle of buildings. We've got like an old building that's got old building problems to rehab. We've got a new building, brand new, but a shell, basically. What can you do with a shell of a building that's you know tall? Can you make lofts out of it in New York City? I don't know, but that sort of place. Uh, and then we've got a new construction office building that, you know, office buildings are not worth that much anymore, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but as new construction, it'd be pretty easy, uh, it'd be relatively easy to renovate that. Um, the problems in each place are different. Um, the buildings in Waitley and Deerfield are both owned by the town, so in some ways that's more straightforward. The building in Sunderland is not owned by any municipality, so they each present different problems in terms of how we would actually move forward, but the information they would give us is basically what would it cost to make the center work the way we want it to and which places are going to have which drawbacks. They also kind of have enough information from doing this work um, they could also tell us at the end, if you wanted to start from scratch, okay, you would need this many acres and it cost you this much to build them. So that it, we, we hope that we'll have um, kind of the information needed to make the next step, which would be a decision on, you know, do we try to get ownership of this building? It's not a municipal one. Do we go with one of our municipals? Or do we start looking for a uh, uh, a town that has a little bit of land or some land that maybe we could acquire for a senior center at a location that we like. So we're information gathering. I'm very excited about that having happened. Um, and then uh, the electric vehicle charging. I assume from this that the building in Sunderland is still on the market. It is still on the market. Because I heard at one point that it was under contract or oh, that there was another buyer. Well then that may have been exaggerated. I, I don't know I don't know all the details, but it, you were you know people are always being told, oh yeah, I've got another person interested right. in this like you know it's kind of the pressure. They want to put the pressure on to try and sell. I guess that this building that we are in right now was on the market for something like six years before they sold it to us for a fraction of what they were asking for it. The first huh. time they asked us to buy it. Wow. So, um, you know, the, it's it may just be they need some time, and we would need some time to really get our poop in a group to to be able to buy a building like that. Um, so, at, at any rate, that's uh, that, that for that. How school. long does the consultant or the engineer, whoever, figure to take to get back to the report? Uh, the final report. Oh, I think it's um, a matter of a. Um, month or so. I didn't okay. ask, I didn't press for a date. But you may learn more about it in the newspaper because Chris Larrabee was at our meeting. Okay. And he's not at this meeting, but he was at a, a meeting earlier. So uh, we'll, I'll, I'll read tomorrow. I might have the answer to that question that I didn't <laughs> remember to ask. Um, no, they were definitely going to be doing, they, they've got to, for example, they've got to send a, a structural engineer to the church in Deerfield because the, one of the worries there is uh, can those floors structurally support what we want to do in there. And that's just not clear that, you know. There were other issues with that building as well. Right, there were other issues. We, Mold yeah. or uh, asbestos. Yeah, or... yeah. I think the, my understanding is the asbestos has been taken care of, but I haven't really seen um, the evidence or reports of that. When I walked in, the mildew smell was not as overwhelming as it had been. They don't have the water barrier or the moisture barrier that they're going to be putting in. That's not been put in yet. And they've not removed the carpets 
from, and this is the sanctuary area, they've not removed the carpet. So it's possible that that situation would be improved, but that's, I mean, I can only report what I, what I, what I saw and smelled when I got there. So that's moving on. Smell not as bad as still not good. <laughs> yeah, that it's not, it was not overwhelming. In the, pre the previous times, it was kind of overwhelming. Um, and hmm. uh, so there's at least improvement there. That's the positive way of saying it. Um, yeah. Uh, then the other um, thing that's been moving a little bit is the electric vehicle um, grant, uh, the one where we're uh, looking through the report now that the consultants came up with and asking for questions. Um, we basically, uh, uh, I don't say tore it in half, we unstapled it in half, and half of the committee was taking a close look at the, uh, the vehicle part and the other half's looking at the charging part. We're going to meet again next Tuesday. Next Tuesday to uh, try and pull together some answers to the questions. I pulled a, put a bunch of questions into Pete and uh, they're really all for, for Keith. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, we're making some progress on that. One of the things, um, say for example, that report we got, it was definitely all the savings in CO2 and in um, uh, fuel costs were done assuming that every vehicle gets 12,000 miles a year. and. Honestly, I don't know if that's true. I don't really know how many miles we get. I bet it's not true for a lot of our trucks. Um, certainly not true for the police cruiser. I think that gets a lot more than average and others get less. And since the cost of ownership is where you have the biggest savings in electric vehicles, you know, gas is, uh, gas is bigger than electricity, generally speaking, you're paying up front and having the savings later. And if it works out to be savings, that's fine. But if you don't run it for that many miles, then the you don't necessarily get the savings. So uh, in some cases, it may make more sense to do uh, hybrid um, because there's less of an upfront cost and you get some of the savings. Um, and so that's what we have done so far with police cars, but our next police car purchase won't be for three years. So we'd have to re-examine this again. In three years, it might be there's the best electric vehicle police car ever is going to be available. And there's going to be millions of them and they'll be, be able to deliver within a week. Um, so there's so we're, uh, we're we're definitely, you're just kind of picking apart the report. And, uh, if I remember correctly, I think I signed up for it. There's an MMA seminar or webinar on electric vehicles coming up. Um, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, yes. in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think right. it would behoove us to, yeah, to, be yeah. On. to be on that one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, all right, that's all I have for updates at this point. And I'll turn it over to Pete for any more administrator updates. Uh, just a few. Uh, the first is the board will remember there was discussion last, early in the spring about joining the Franklin County Regional Animal Control Program. Uh, we least submitted a letter of interest in order to join that program. At our last communication with the county sheriff's office, which was back in May, it was that the board just needed the the, therefore, needed to have a meeting in order to review the request to make a determination if the town should be allowed into the program. Basically, just confirming do they have employees to service the community. Unfortunately, that meeting didn't happen, oh. and we weren't informed of that. Um, and I found out a couple of weeks ago that it kind of fell by the wayside. But they did confirm that they are getting a board meeting scheduled. They will take this up. Okay. They will take it under consideration because they have hired two new officers that have been trained. So they now have this step staffing availability to cover additional communities. So yeah. hopefully in the very near future, we should have a response that we yeah. are. This, this dog in. hearing situation has certainly made us aware of the yeah. need for an animal control office. It's been emphasized that we are under mutual aid right now as opposed to being in a program, um, which at least it's great that we have that mutual aid and we have that support, but we do want to enter into the formal program. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that will be brought back to the board because you will have to sign off on an agreement. Okay. Um, also, last week, the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization held its quarterly meeting one of the main topics that came up was that the Franklin County bikeway sign installation uh, project is underway. This is to install 
signage on all of the county bikeway uh, routes. There are a number of different loops and routes throughout the county. Um, and so basically it's just a, a notice and making sure that residents know that soon. If they haven't seen the signs, they will be signed. They have money now to fabricate and install on all. Wheatley does have two um, part portions. We have a, a Wheatley Conway loop that runs through a majority of the community. And then there is also the River Road Connector, which is a north-south route. Uh, so there are two road routes that are part of this bikeway, which if they don't have signs, they will have signs by the end of this year. Is the sign just to identify the route? Yes. Yeah. So would it be possible for us to get a sign like at the library to indicate that there's a bike? That would station? be the town could certainly okay. do that. This is just the county installing on the actual route okay. itself. But if you want to do wayfinding to direct people to it, we could certainly do that. Yeah. Yeah, if there's any money left on that grant for the um, the bike repair stations, right? If there's any, like, okay. there yeah. might be 50 yeah. cents left yeah. Yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there's any money left in there, maybe we could uh, use that for something. Okay. So yeah. We haven't given it back yeah. already. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. because okay. the sign's not, the, Repair station is not right on Chestnut Plain Road, so maybe a sign yeah. directing yeah. bike riders to them. Okay. Um, the next update is just a quick update on the FY24 town summary budget report. Um, as you know, there were a number of different budget transfers as there typically are at the end of the fiscal year, both interdepartment and reserve fund. Um, everything looks great after those. There is just one item that's outstanding. It's an invoice for the our assessor uh, platform, our assessor map platform. Uh, that invoice is an outstanding invoice, a small dollar amount of four fifty. So we will just put that on a special town meeting or uh, the final annual town meeting as a prior year bill. So yeah. otherwise, everything else looks great um, for yeah. our books for FY twenty four. Um, the FERCOG Cooperative Inspection Program is nearing their completion, switching to a new permitting platform. What this means is that all of our building permits and, and electrical, which is all handled through FERCOG, they are moving to a brand new platform, which will make it easier for their inspectors to do on-site inspections and enter the enter information oh. on-site as opposed to on paper and then going back and trying to transcribe notes. Um, it will also make it easier for applicants to find out status of their permits now that everything is going to be within a uh, updated platform. They are currently in their testing phase when they hope to have uh, that system up and live this fall. <laughs> and then the FERCOG quarterly meeting was held last, the council quarterly meeting was held last week, uh, two weeks ago, I look at it. Um, and uh, we went over a number of different items, but the primary discussion was a presentation on regional housing plan for Franklin County. Uh, there was a lot of great information that was presented showing density and where we have population trends. The most noticeable trend, which is true nationwide, but still bore out here in Franklin County as well, is that while population may be decreasing, the housing needs are still increasing because the family unit size is decreasing. So you, what were typically, you know, average family sizes of the four or so, now are more on the two. So although your population may be decreasing because the population, the family sizes are smaller, you still need housing units, which is why there is still an increase in the need for housing units. And we do still have a significant deficiency in housing units and primarily affordable housing units uh, based yeah. on median income. Uh, and so with that housing product prep plan, there will be recommendations that will come out um, and best practices that will help direct that. Um, we did discuss the fact that, you know, a lot of communities are focused on agricultural. Uh, how do we pre preserve that while also providing uh, additional housing availability? Also the fact that many of our communities are on septic. So yeah. It does limit the avail the developable land area as well as yeah. the size and number of units that you can do. Uh, just a PSA for the residents: Route Five Ten is going to be repaved 
Um, Stop, I believe, has already started putting out some markers, but it will start. The repavement project will run just south of the Wheatley truck stop all the way to the Hatfield Northampton line. You can currently see a seam oh. around the diner where a previous repavement had done. Yeah. That seam is going to be the start of the repavement oh. and then it runs south through the, the community. That would be very welcome, especially in the stretch between the diner and Christian Lane. Oh, which oh. is. <laughs> Always, yeah. Um, it's, it's yeah. It's it's kind it of gets, it gets very heavy truck traffic from Yankee yes. Candle yeah. trucks going yeah. back and forth. Takes a beating. Um, and the conservation commission will be holding its hearings in August on those requests because it does have to go to the council. Uh, and the the statement is that Mass DOT intends to have that repayment done by all the winter. Essentially, because you really don't so want to be repaving right. during winter time, but yeah. uh, that is the intention. It might be like the September, October, yes, late season. Oh, possibly November, but yes. Yeah. Um, and then you already talked about the feasibility study, so that's, that's, that's all. Okay. okay. All right. Are there any items not anticipated? No. All right. I would entertain a motion. Uh, next meeting, just next, next meeting, oh. August 13th. Right. Yes, I've got it. Next meeting. And there's a poll hearing at the next meeting. Yes. We do uh -huh. have two. Uh -huh. You'll be lucky enough to come back. And, and then the on August 27th, there's another, there's another poll hearing. <laughs> yes. We are back. We are back. I really was trying to get them on the same meeting, but unfortunately, Verizon staff was not available. Uh, and I didn't want to hold off. Right. So, right. So. Like that, right. Oh, okay. They right. are very related projects, so just be prepared. Okay. okay. Move to adjourn. I I'll will second. second. Oh, we will all second. second that. Fine. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Julie. Yes. Uh, Fred. Yes. Joyce. Yes. All right. Well, good Thank night, you, everybody. Thank you, Joyce. Hey, have fun. Bye, Julie. Thanks. Bye, Julie. Take care.